So uh, there's no perfect solution to anything, obviously. Life isn't perfect. Mm-hmm. What I'm thinking, though, is... So what I, for example, with the um, with Ali's story, um, mm-hmm. the what it felt like from listening, and I, I, I agree, I think that you keep things to the story. You don't really add any quote-unquote propaganda, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's all very much about the story and what's been covered, and it's all fact-based, which is great because that's what it should be about. Yeah. My own opinion on uh, a lot of the stories, including Ali's, was that it didn't feel like, um, from 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 the story that was told, it didn't feel like the stories were taken that seriously by the authorities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it felt like, um, you know, especially with Ali's case, because it didn't seem like there was any force that was used. Um, and so it was easy for them to sort of wash their hands of it and say, well, yeah. you know, she's probably just walked away from her life. But actually, no, she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. She had a, a, a job. Um, yeah. She her, her light is on in her bedroom. People don't just yeah. walk up like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, well, exactly. no, actually, it's not it's not adding up. So for me, it's like, do you think... <sighs> Now, this is going to sound really political. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is what I want to happen. But do mm-hmm. you think that if we, is it worth us as a community? And I'm obviously not American. I'm, I'm Black British. So I speak mm-hmm. for Black people in Britain, Black people in America, Black people, wherever they may be, um, where Black people are the, 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 the oppressed, because we're not necessarily the minority as much as we're the oppressed. Um, mm-hmm would is it worth is it should we be adopting a for us by us system um and i'm not saying segregate at all Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. but i'm saying maybe if we had our own judicial systems that were Mm -hmm. created by us for us then Mm -hmm. perhaps we can it would be easier for us to hold each other accountable because um then it doesn't it eliminate the, the 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 instances where you have an authority who doesn't isn't built to protect you, was never built to protect you, was never designed to protect you, and mm-hmm. doesn't care about you. Or is it just better to have more people who look like us in the existing system? I mean, oof, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know because I think that there are. We would first, okay, so I'm gonna, we would first have to, I feel like, address the issues that exist within our community before we could then ask us mm. to oversee each other. I think mm. that is the challenge that exists within our community and outside of whatever's going on in other communities within the black community. There are conversations that we are not willing to have with each other. There are things mm. that we are not willing to address, and mm. I think that putting then who it, it wouldn't it wouldn't work at this point and that's that that would be my fear that it would it would it would just self destruct because we would not be able to agree we would not we're, we're so not on the same page about so many important things i think that it would be difficult you know what i mean um and i mm. think that right now and 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 what we have is yeah we have to kind of change what is going on with what we have and that because that's I mean, right now, that's all we have. That's all we have. So, and when I say that, I mean, like, I, I'm very much advocating for us not caring that the media does not amplify these stories. Like, let's stop caring about that. Let's stop caring about it. CNN's not going to cover Raja McQueen or Jasmine Smith. They're not. Because if they were, mm-hmm. they would have done it already. Um, mm-hmm. They know that the, the problem exists. They know that the coverage is not is not even. Um, they know about missing white women's syndrome. They were talking about it around the Gabby Petito thing. Um, but they're still not changing. They're not, they're not fixing it. Yeah. And so that leads yeah. you to believe that they just don't care and they're not going to. And so instead of, you know, I said this in one of my last episodes, like I'm tired of begging people to see us. I'm tired of begging people mm-hmm. to acknowledge us. There's enough of us that do care and not just black people. There, there are allies outside of the community that care also, and we can create our own community. We can create, we can we can feed into, you know, podcasts like mine and there, there are many others, um, websites like OurBlackGirls.com, um, the Black and Missing Foundation. We can pour into those resources and create our own, you know, and amplify our own voices. And like I said, you know, once we start doing that ourselves, 
believe the media will eventually see what we're doing without them. And then they'll try to figure out how to do it also. They'll either try to figure out how to copy it. And if they can't copy it, then they'll try to figure out how to bring people in to, to try to do it them, you know, to try to do what we're doing. And I think that's kind of where we are. It's like, I think we have the opportunity now between things like, you know, these clubhouse talks, um, podcasts, um, YouTube, TikTok, we have the ability to create our own community. And I think that's something that we really need to um, be working on and working towards around this particular conversation of missing um, black women, women of color, um, you know, these unsolved murders, um, human trafficking, which is, which is a really Mm -hmm. huge issue. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's a bigger issue than people even no, I mean, it's a huge mm-hmm. issue and it affects so many young black women. So many young black women are being being trafficked, you know what I mean? And nobody's mm-hmm. really talking about it. And so all of these conversations need to be had. And, and like I said, the media, they're, they're, let's stop begging them to do it. And let's just let's just do it ourselves. Like, let's let's build these communities ourselves and, these, and, and, and amplify the, the, the voices that are already doing it, already putting in the work, already, you know, they just don't have the backing and they need the backing. So, you know, wake it up. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, tell your Love it. To pull up. Tell them to pull up. Like, pull you know, up. <laughs> pull up. It's time to pull That's up. So cool. I, it, it's just too much. It's too, it's too much waiting and, and wringing of our hands and being like, Oh, well they didn't cover the story. Meanwhile, 20 other black women have gone missing while we're trying to beg them to cover the story of it. You know what I mean? Like it's time that we stop asking them to do it and just, just do it ourselves. You know what I mean? There's so mm-hmm. many ways that we can do it. Um, and there's so many people that actually care. And that's why I'm so happy that we're continuing to have this conversation. And I did an interview mm-hmm. with the podcast last week and um, I was saying, you know, when it comes to the Gabby Petito conversation, I want people to not just have this conversation when, when a white woman goes missing. I want us to just, mm-hmm. I want this to, just to be the conversation. I want black women to be a part of the conversation. And it seems like mm-hmm. we only have the conversation when we're trying to counter the coverage of something else. Oh, well, you guys are covering mm-hmm. the Gabby Petito story, but what about all these other stories? What about and we this? should just be yeah. talking about all these stories all the time, all year long. Anyway, period. And what happens is then Gabby Petito becomes the poster child for missing white women syndrome. And Gabby Petito didn't ask to be the poster child for missing white women syndrome. She didn't mm-hmm. ask to be murdered by her boyfriend and, and left in, in, in the desert. And what, mm-hmm. and what happens is that then we're, you know, we're, we're victimizing her family by making her part of this conversation that they didn't ask to be a part of. And so if we, if we stop using them as poster child of why, oh, this day they covered her and not these other people and just have these conversations, um, it, it, the, the coverage will increase, the care will increase. And I think it's really amazing that um, Gabby Petito's father, I follow him on Twitter, and ever since Gabby went missing and he saw the reaction that the, the world really gave you know, to his daughter missing, um, and, and he noticed the conversation around how Black women, Indigenous women, women of color are not getting that same coverage, um, he a lot of times uses his Twitter account, because he has a lot of followers now, to share missing persons flyers from uh, people of color. Oh, um, and, and yeah, and he's really said, you know, if, if, if Gabby got this attention, then, you know, why, why aren't these other people getting this attention? And so even in his pain of losing his daughter in such a tragic way, he recognized mm-hmm. that other women, other people don't get that um, attention. And he's using his platform to try to, you know, help bring attention to those things. So that, that right there should let you know, if Gabby Petito's father can do it, then all of us can do it. You know what I mean? Like all he's of us just lost his, yeah, he just lost his daughter in a brutal way, his young, you know, child. And mm. he's figuring out how to use his platform and his voice to do something for other families. Um, so like I said, if he can do that, then, then it, there's no excuse why when, when you see a missing person flyer on your feed and it's a woman of color or, or, or a man of color, that you're not sharing it. You know what I mean? If you, if it, if it was a, if it was a white woman and you would have shared it, then there's no reason why you wouldn't share it if it was a, a person of color. You know, something that you mentioned and, and thank you, by the way, for letting us know about Gary Petito's father. I didn't know that and um, yeah. hats off to him. I don't know if I'd have the strength, to be honest, to, yeah, to either <laughs> see either. past, I yeah, my, I couldn't do it. So yeah, big, big, big props to him. Mm-hmm. Um, you obviously are um, looking at a lot of stories. You're consuming a lot of content that's pretty heavy. It's, um, and again, as we said before, it's, people 
that look like you, people that could be your friend, sister, daughter, mother, etc. Are there any stories that you've come across that have changed your routine? Is there anything that has sat with you, even if you didn't want it to? Well, I, I, you know, in, 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 in some way, they all they all sit with me. Um, it's some, you know, I get asked that question all the time. And it's it's I, I honestly wouldn't really, if I was being honest, be able to tell you that one of them sticks out any more than the other. I think that I sometimes feel a little bit more connected to cases where the family member has reached out only because. I have a contact, for example, um, Jennifer Blackman, who I did, um, she was my sixth episode and a friend of hers, her best friend reached out to me. And at that time, um, Jennifer had only been missing, I, my, it was March, 2021. She had only been missing since December of 2020. So three, four months, um, right. she had been missing. Um, she's a mother of four from, um, Oh goodness, River Road, Michigan. And um she had just went missing and she asked me to cover the story. And I have mm-hmm. felt connected to that story because um, you know, I have that connection to um her sister, I mean to her friend, and then her brother reached out to me to thank me for covering, you know, his sister's story. Um and so, you know, I try to check in with them every now and then to see if there's been any updates on the case. And, you know, whenever I get a chance I try to reshare um Jennifer's missing person flyer and things like that. So sometimes I do kind of feel connected to um, you know, some of those stories a little bit more. But all of them all of them sit with me in a certain way. And I, I can't say that they've changed my routine, but they've definitely changed um, like my outlook, you know what I mean? Like they changed the way I kind of see things because even as somebody who watched a lot of true crime, um, you know, every true crime documentary comes on Netflix, Investigation Discovery, I'm, I know I'm here for it. I never realized how many black women were missing. I never realized how right. many unsolved murders of black women there were. And so it's, you know, it, it the, the podcast quickly went from something that I was doing to kind of, you know, you know, decide, you know, until I was going to decide what I was going to do next. And, 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 and it changed from that into like a, a passion project, like a passion of mine to tell these women's stories as much as I can, as many as I can, you know, for as, as long as I can, you know? So, um, yeah, that's, that's the ways in which, you know, doing the show and, and hearing these women's stories has, has changed me. But, you know, one of the things is I, I try to connect Somebody asked me this the other day, and I, I said that, you know, I try to just really connect to these women, even the ones that whose family members I don't know, as opposed to connecting to how they die or the circumstances right. of their disappearances. Um, I right. think that makes it easier for me to not internalize all of the horrible things that have happened to people and happened to these women mm-hmm. um, by staying, you know, by staying connected to, 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 to just, you know, them, you know what I mean? Like who they were and 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 you know and who they were to their families you know so um. you're doing god's work i can do it (laughs) i I listen to a few stories and i'm like yeah no i have to i I need i need i need a week at least and then i'll come back to this because yeah it's um it's a lot it's a lot and here's the Um, the craziest thing the story that mm -hmm. so the two stories that have actually been like the the details of the story were the hardest to like read and consume was I did two bonus episodes um on the podcast um for Black History Month. And the mm-hmm. first one was the lynching of Laura Nelson and then the second one was the murder of Mary Turner. And yeah. the details of what happened to those women um yeah. they were just, it was just like the 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 the, the, the the Laura Nelson one was a little bit the Mary Turner story the details of that story are just so you know, disturbing that I couldn't even say them in the episode. Like I had to put a link in the, um, in the, um, I'm sorry, the uh, notes so that people could click. Like if you want to, you know, get in more depth in what happened, you can click on the link, but because I literally can't say it. Um, and, and I think that that's also why I don't try to go into too much, too many details of these crimes. Um, you know, just, just try to keep it at really basically what you need to know to make it a complete story. You know, I'm not going to tell you every every bloody detail about what happened you know, to, to this woman. If you want to know, you can always, you know, you can Google it. But um, I'm just not going to tell that in the story and not in that way. No, I I know what you mean. My mom has a saying that she likes to uh, 
to remind me of. She she would say it when I would say bad words, <laughs> but it's um, basically the saying is uh, say say the devil's name and and the devil will appear. So you basically. Um, you know, when you're telling these stories and you're reliving these things, it's almost like an invocation. Uh, my mom yeah. is very deep and spiritual, so I I, I get it. If you don't want to, yeah. if those are stories that you can't say out loud, I, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, on the other side of things, are there any stories that have been rewarding in any sort of way? Is there any story that you've you've looked into, you've investigated, and there's been justice, there's been a light at the end of the tunnel? Have you had anything like that? I mean, you know, sometimes I cover, um, you know, I, you know, the podcast at the end of the day is a, is a, is a form of entertainment in, in a way. And so people, you know, they, they, they look forward to it, they consume it. And so I, um, it's sometimes um, difficult to just listen to story after story that doesn't have a conclusion or doesn't have a, 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 an ending. Um, so I, I, I also will add in stories where the murders have been solved and, 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 and the, the murder has been caught. Um, the, the, the funny thing is, is that it, it, it never, ever feels like justice because I haven't covered one story where a woman has been found alive. You know what I mean? Um, right. And so it, it, even if the murderer is caught and he goes to jail, that's that's only justice in the judicial sense that he's now in jail. But there's no justice for the families because their 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 loved one has been murdered. Um, so it's never I haven't. I have not come across a case yet where there has been a happy ending where, you know, I've covered the case and she was missing for a certain amount of time. And then she was, um, she was found. I know recently, um, the Akia Eggleston, um, one of the stories I covered, um, the father of her unborn baby, Akia was eight months pregnant when she went missing from Baltimore in 2017. Um, and they knew that she was missing when she did not show up to her own baby shower. Um, and she has been missing this whole time and her stepfather family have been, you know, they've been all over, you know, trying to, you know, bring attention to Akia's case. And, and it's been featured on like oxygen, um, you know, other crew, True, a lot of true crime podcasts that cover her story. But just about a month ago or beginning of this month, they ended up capturing the father of her unborn child in, I think it was Michigan, and charging him with her murder and the murder, murder of the unborn child. Now, Akia has never been found. Her body has not oh, been wow. found. Um, you know, and so there's some sense like, okay, good, they got him because everybody pretty much knew that it was most likely him he had something to do with her disappearance so now that he is you know you know and you know in police custody and being charged with her murder it, it's it's somewhat feels like a little bit of justice because he's been you know arrested but how can mm -hmm. it be justice because akia is not with her family they actually do not know where she is they can't bury her they can't you know so there's a part of them that still doesn't have closure so you know so so to answer your question not really i, I have not come across one of those cases yet um so you know they're they're all you know unjust in, in some way so I think that's almost like obviously I can't I'm not going to use the word I'm not going to compare because god forbid I don't want to be in either scenario but I really do feel I feel for everyone but I feel for the families where they haven't found their yeah. lost their loved one because I think there is at least some level of closure in being able yeah. to you know, say goodbye, bury a body, oh, yeah. have that ritual, you know, having that endless what if sounds like oh, yeah. torture the, the not to me. Knowing it. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a theme amongst all of the missing person cases is the not knowing what happened. Um, because a lot of the families get to a point where they know that their their loved one is prob probably is dead and they just want to know where their body is so that they can bury them, so that they can have you know, so they can memorialize them, so they can have a funeral, so they can have a gravesite to visit. Um, and without mm. even having that, they're, the, the person is just gone. It's like, you know, they're, they're really frozen in, in time and they in have time, no yeah. idea, you know, if they're still alive, if it, they, they really don't have any idea. And so, yeah, I think that is, they're definitely the most difficult of, of the cases for the, I would assume for the families of these, of these women, because... They don't, they, they never have closure. They never are able to conclude. And even when, like I said, even in the case of Akia Eggleston where, you know, they've arrested her, um, her, her child's father, they don't have Akia's body. So they still don't, you know, that they still don't have closure and they may not ever get her body back. Okay, depending yeah. on, you know, where, what, what happened to it? I mean, it's been, you know, 2000, we're talking about since 2017 and they believe that she 
was murdered the day that you know that, that she was last um, heard from. So um, yeah, so it, it's definitely um, difficult for those for those families to not have that like that conclusion. Amara, I would love to pick your brains about something. Maybe not today, because mm -hmm. I want to open the floor to anyone in the audience who wants to pick your brains. But at some point, if you're willing to visit again, I would love to oh, pick yeah, your definitely. brains about like nature versus nurture, because that's something that I semi obsess over. And <laughs> um, yeah, I would just love to to see how you think of what you think about that. Um, I think it's great that you tell the stories that you tell. They're very difficult stories. I, like I said, even just sort of prepping for this conversation, I listened to a few back to back and I just thought, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> I do not know how she does it. I had to go watch Love is Blind for like an hour afterwards because I'm like, I, yeah, I, have to, I actually have to watch the final episode. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 I think, like I said, I think that, that what, what drives me right now is the fact that it, that people need to hear these stories. And yeah. so as difficult as they are for me to maybe tell or, you know, even outside of, um, just the difficulty of the story, just doing a podcast every week for the last 40 something weeks of my life, sometimes that's difficult to, 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 you know, pull myself up and do the research and, and record. And I have three children and a husband. And so, but the thing that drives me, the thing that keeps me going every week is these women, their families, and the fact that there aren't a lot of people telling these stories there. This story may have never been told. And, you know, um, right now we're bringing in a lot of listeners every month. And so, that's people that are hearing these stories that have never heard these stories before and and that can make a difference so that's that's what keeps me going you know <laughs> i love it amara you're we've got a link here to black girl gone a true crime podcast um people will see this in this room people will see it in the replays the replays are here here to stay um i before i danielle's come up stage anyone who wants to come up please feel free to raise your hand if you want to ask a question or if you just want to make a comment on anything that you've heard um before i sort of go on mute i have um here another excerpt from your episode about ali uh i want to say her name is gilmore i uh that one really stayed with me for i think personally why it stayed with me is the fact that she clearly is very much been abducted and um, she, no one, well, the authorities at least didn't seem to take it seriously. Um, she, I think you made a, a sort of comparison to the way that everybody sort of made a fuss about Gary Petito, God rest her soul. And, um, and she was pregnant. She was pregnant. Ali was pregnant when she went missing. It's been 15 years. Her child, yeah. if the child survived, is a 15 year old out in the world, no mother, no father or maybe not right and that yeah. is really playing on my mind I'm like damn you know that's 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 a lot of lives ruined yeah. in yeah. you know in a short space of time yeah. so I'm gonna play that and um and then yeah as I said anyone who wants to discuss please feel free to to come up but the problem is that no matter what if Gabby had been black or brown CNN would not have been talking about her and so we really can't continue to rely on the mainstream media to amplify these stories. We have to do it ourselves. We have resources like the Black and Missing Foundation and OurBlackGirls.com that are bringing awareness and shining light on cases involving Black people. I know I will continue to highlight these stories as well because there are so many stories to be told. I'm still always so surprised by the number of stories I find weekly of missing Black women I've never heard of. I mean, I shouldn't have for doing this for a few months now, but I'm really still shocked. Amara, thank you so much for doing the stories. Thank you for the, having the courage to be able to do them. And also the, I want to say, tenacity to be able to mm -hmm. continue doing them because I don't have it. So, yeah, I appreciate what you're doing. And thank you for sitting with me. And please come back. Oh, <laughs> I will definitely come back. Yeah, no, I definitely, okay, good. I definitely I enjoy myself. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Danielle? No, I wanted to say, as I'm sitting in the audience, I'm just wanting to, like, clap my mic, and I couldn't. And then I'm like, <laughs> there's no chat. We didn't cut the chat on. It's so many things that Amara and you said that just really stood out to me about, you know, be the change that you want to see and being tired of begging for people to tell our stories. 
Um, I think all of that stood out. And, and I also think when Amara talked about that human trafficking, it is such a big issue. And it's such a, you know, people look at human trafficking and it's like, it's their issue. That's their thing. That's them. But no, it's right next door to you. It could be your friend. It could be your daughter. It could be all of that. And so I think that is such a big issue. I think one of the cases that really stood out to me was that I think it was Renisha, um, the young girl who was shot on the porch in Dearborn um, because mm -hmm. the, I guess the man was scared because she was knocking on his door and he was scared. He mm -hmm. said he was scared, but he shot her through the screen door. And I think yes. that really stood out because of the fear that people have of Black people that caused them mm -hmm. to do those type of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, those, yeah, definitely. And to, 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 to on the, uh, the, the fact about the human trafficking, um, I, like I said, I, I, I used to be one of those people, like you hear um, human trafficking and you think of a third world country, you think of a cartel, you think mm. of, um, what's, what's the movie, the movie Taken, Taken where his daughter yeah. gets, you know, Taken and you think, you think about that, like, okay, well don't go to a third world country by yourself or, you know what I mean? But it's not happening in third world country. It's literally happening in our cities and our towns. Like you said, it's happening. It's people that live next door to you. It's, 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 it, and it doesn't look like what you think that it looks like. You know what I mean? Like people think that it's, these big time guys. It was like the last case with the Jasmine Smith. They live in, in some small town in Ohio. Like it's not this major city. And he was somebody that a lot of people knew and they suspect him of trafficking these women. Um, so it's definitely a big issue. And I think that um, more conversations need to be had about about sex trafficking, about human trafficking um, and how, yes, it can happen to um, almost anybody, if not everybody, because, you know, people don't underestimate the way it happens. You know, it's not just you getting kidnapped in a white van and next thing you know, you're in a seedy hotel. A lot of times it happens to people that, you know, once again, it's, it's connections, it's personal connections. It's somebody that, you know, you know, invites you to go somewhere. And next thing you know, you're drugged. It, it, it's all types of things that happen to these, um, to these uh, people and not just women in these situations. Um, men have been sex trafficked, children are being sex trafficked. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot. And about the Renisha McBride situation, um, you know, that's, that's part of the dehumanization of, of black people. It's this automatic, um, you know, fear that, you know, we're the aggressors or we're there to, to harm that, that is, is why, that, that man had that reaction in that moment when Renisha knocked on his door and simply just needed help. Um, and so, you know, so like, you know, like I said, my, my goal of this podcast is to, is to, is to try to change those conversations around these women and, and to humanize them and to allow you to know that they are real people, um, you know, and, and they have real lives and, and the things that happened to them, they did not deserve to happen to them. Yes. And thank you for Absolutely. that. Sorry, Danielle, did you want to say something? No, I just wanted to thank her for that. Because, you know, one, one of the things I noticed about podcasts, about Black people telling Black stories as a podcast is that they sometimes they, they stop. Mm, and I, yeah. I don't want you to stop. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, well, I, don't have, I don't have any plans on stopping. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very, like I said, I'm very dedicated to doing this. And my goal is to, like I said, is to, is to figure out how to expand this and really, um, you know, make it, make it bigger and make it more. Um, I didn't, like I said, I did not know when I started this show, I had no idea that anybody was ever going to listen to my podcast um you know i was going to be happy if i got 10 downloads a month you know i had no idea but once i started seeing the reaction um to the show and, the, and i started getting the feedback from people i realized that there's there's an there is a need for this and um like i said it is there there is challenging there's some days and some weeks where it's it's harder than others but um the fact that these stories need to be told like i'm 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 honored to be able to tell these stories. Whenever I get an email from someone asking me to cover a story of someone that they know or their loved one, I'm, I'm honored because I'm like, you want me to tell their story, you know? Um, so it's, it's something that um, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And my, my real goal is to really make this into something 
way bigger than what it is. And, and like I said, so that we no longer have to depend on CNN and MSNBC and, you know, all of these mainstream entities to cover our stories. We have outlets um, that are covering these stories and bringing in, you know, people that care and, and, and want to know about it. Yes, thank you. And we're here to support you every step of the way. So, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely actually Amara I have one last question that I have been yes. thinking about ever since I discovered the podcast is mm -hmm. um are you going to do a franchise maybe for the UK or any other any other country outside of America yes you know I would I would actually love to um my husband is going to actually love this because he's always been telling me to uh he's like you gotta you know cover some other stories um yeah I definitely want to um, branch out and cover stories because I've definitely, particularly from the UK, I've gotten um, messages from um, people who live in the UK, black black people from the UK. It's like, can you? There's so many stories, you know, here that you could cover. Um, and so, I definitely mm. would love to, um, you know, expand and start covering stories, um, you know, international stories, stories from the UK, Canada, um, things like that. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's so many. I have I have a lot of you know, big plans for this podcast. Like I said, it's just been like, it's been a whirlwind because I, I, I started from like nothing and, and then less than a year, it's really become really big. And so, um, you know, sometimes I'm still trying to like take it all in and take it one day at a time um, in terms mm -hmm. of like the response to the show, because it's, it's like I said, sometimes it's just like overwhelming, but um I definitely have a lot of plans for this, for this show and for, you know, for, for what I'm doing in these stories. And I'm um, like, I, like I said, I'm just glad that we're continuing to have these conversations and that people, that people care about these conversations. People want to have these conversations. People want to, um, you know, talk about these things. Absolutely. Well, if you ever need a UK correspondent, you know, like the weatherman on the news, I'm putting yes. myself forward. I will be <laughs> your weather, well, your UK weather correspondent. <laughs> I would love, Feel yes, free I would love it. Feel free to reach out. <clears throat> I might, I might have to take long holidays, but we can talk about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, thank you, Amara. Thank you so much for your time, honestly. I, uh, like I said, big fan of the podcast. Um, do you have any plans for the next one? I know you do it weekly, right? Yes. Um, so the next episode will be announced tomorrow. I usually announce it on my mm -hmm. um, Instagram. You can follow me at Black Girl Born Podcast on Instagram. Um, and I, I right. update every week. Um, I usually put, you know, the upcoming episode so you can see what the episode is going to be. Um, but yeah, the, the episodes are weekly. They come out on Monday. Um, they're usually in the feed by 5 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so yeah. Okay. So yeah. So just uh, if you want to follow the, the Instagram page, you can see what tomorrow's episode is going to be. I'm still narrowing it down. So that's why I'm not going to tell you right now. I can't, I can't tell you right now. I'm still narrowing it down. <laughs> it's, sometimes it gets like that. Like sometimes I'm, I'm still narrowing down the episodes even at the last minute. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. Um, so, um, but uh, sometimes I'm like dibbling between two um, stories, but um, definitely it'll be on the uh, Instagram on my Instagram feed tomorrow. So, <laughs> okay, great. So, guys, if you're not already following Amara, follow her. You can see in her bio, she's got the Black Girl Gone podcast Instagram and Twitter linked. You've got the link up there to the podcast, uh, the Apple podcast. Are you on Spotify, Amara? Yes, we are on um, all platforms, anywhere you get your podcast uh, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, we're also on YouTube. Um, so if you like to listen to podcasts on YouTube, we also have a YouTube channel. Um, and I just kind of figured all that out. So the, uh, episodes that come out on Monday will be available on the YouTube channel on Mondays. Um, and then I'm also on TikTok. If you're a TikToker, um, I usually, I used to try to post a lot of information on there. I'll share information about, um, women that are missing. Um, I also like do little previews of the episodes on TikTok as well. Um, so if you're you know, on TikTok, you can follow me on there also. Amazing. Amara, thank you again. I have nothing else to say except thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for having the time to speak with me today. Um, thank you for coming back in future. I can't wait for the next conversation. Oh, and uh, thank yeah. you. 
to yeah. everybody in the room. Thank you for listening, for sharing. I see a few friends in the audience. Thank you so much for supporting. And um, see you all on the Clubhouse streets. Right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us for part two of the interview with Amara. Didn't Bonnie do a great job? We hope you enjoyed gaining further insights into the challenges faced by marginalized communities, as well as the urgent need for increased resources and attention to be directed towards cases involving missing Black women. We want to extend a huge thank you to Amara for sharing her expertise and passions with us. Her efforts to bring these cases to the forefront is truly commendable. Now, if you have not, or if you still need to subscribe to our channel, I urge you to do it now so that you can experience future interviews and conversations with thought leaders like Amara. Now, download Black Girl Gone podcast today. Thank you.